All right, so let's see. When we open this, we want to open in a new window. Uh, this still does. All right, so do we need to download this and open it in uh, the viewer? So if you can't type in it like that, I think if you just open it in Acrobat, it should allow you to then edit it. And that's what we want to be able to do. So the file is called D5L1. All right, and we open it here, uh, which opens in Acrobat, and then you should be able to open it. Anybody have any issues being able to edit the PDF? All right, we're going to come back to page one at the end. That kind of sums up everything. Destiny? There will be, I'm sure, some vocabulary that we have not discussed yet. All right, so uh, we're going to go through this and talk about that. All right, so let's see. We're going to go on to page two here. All right, so when we're done with our project, we export it, all right? And it says, before publishing a finished project, it should be proofread and checked, start to finish for gaps in the timeline, audio levels, usage of B-roll, and overall flow of the video. Regarding rendering, the timeline indicator is color-coded to show the areas of the timeline that have trouble play with, uh, playing back. Red means the video will have some issues trying to play and may stutter. Yellow means it should play without a problem in the timeline. Green means that there will be no problems playing that portion of the video. In and out points are set at the beginning and the end of the sequence to render the whole sequence uh, to green should one decide to do so. All right, so in I'm going to open up the file that they're looking at because on this one um, it is asking you to kind of look at a file that they're using. All right, so the first thing there it says is are there any gaps in the timeline? All right, looking at this file, does anybody see any gaps in here? No, and I mean you might kind of look here and think that that's a gap, but there's a title over it, right? And there's another video. So there's not really any just gaps that are going throughout your whole timeline on there. All right, so number 4A would be no. Um, are the audio levels good throughout the sequence? How would we determine if the audio levels are good? Mm -hmm. So we can play it back. I would kind of scrub through and I would look at my audio level over here, or my meter. What should I be looking for in the meter to determine if, it's, if, the, if the levels are good? Austin? No, yeah, if there was no audio at all, or if we're getting into the red up there, right? So just kind of scan through, because if you see it going into the red, it's going to start to get distorted and sound you know, like you're not going to be able to understand what, what's happening. It's going to be really kind of distracting. All right. So with that one, um, I would say that the audio levels are good. There are no, there's no audio in the red. Or I could say, yes, there's no. I'll pull this over so you can see what I'm writing here, too. And none of it is really low either. That's something that I think we've seen on some of our projects that um, we want to be careful of also is that none of the audio is too low. Megan? Well, why are you waiting until now? The audio should be between negative 6 to negative 12 decibels. All right, so when we're looking at these, this audio level here, which I think negative six is kind of low, or no, wait, where is that on here? I guess it'd be about right here.
All right. Um, what is exposure if they're talking about in video? The next one says, what is, do the exposure and effects levels look good? Who's taking photography, Tyler? How much light, yeah. And that has to do when we're talking about color correction. So we'd want to have some nice range of value. All right, so I think that it looks pretty good. I see some nice bright highlights. I see some midtones. I see some darks. All right, so I would say for this one, yes. There is good range of value. All right, the next one they're talking about is resolution of the project. What is resolution, just in general? Austin? How good the video looks. Yeah, how good it looks or the quality. App, yes, that's what I was looking for, the quality of it. How can we determine what the resolution is? So if we go to sequence, or where is it here? Sequence and then sequence settings, I believe. Oh, uh, I have to click in the timeline. There we go. So it's telling us that our frame rate or our size is 1920 by 1080. All right, so that is our resolution here for number E or letter E. 1920 by 1080. All right, and we got to that by going to sequence and then sequence settings. Nineteen twenty by ten eighty. It's still small. I'll put it back. Sorry about that. All right. All right, the next thing it asks there, how do you lower the project size? To do that, we're going to lower the bit rate and quality of the file. So I was just looking in those sequence settings uh, where we could change that. I'm not exactly seeing it, but we'll, we'll just go with that. Lower the bit rate and quality that might be actually in our export settings let's see if I'm right on that one uh, and I'll come back to that I'll pull that up if, uh, if you didn't get that quick enough just hold on one second so if I go to file export media okay yeah so right up here in your presets right so we see high bit rate there so we could lower it to one of these other settings here to get our, our bit rate being uh, different. So that's in your, I'll just say in the export settings. All right, so there's how we can do that. Uh, the next one, spelling errors. What would we do to check for spelling errors? Uh, Destiny, what, what do you think we would do to check for spelling errors? What would we be checking? Like what areas if we had in our project? Would we be looking at the videos themselves? Like we'd be looking at things like this title, right? So I would scan through. Do we see any spelling errors there? It's more fun. They got the O there for outdoors. I think that's correct, right? You know, we think about these things as not being really production minded, but there is no spell checker in Premiere like some other programs. 
Um, so you have to manually go in there, but I don't see any spelling errors in there. All right, and the last, oh, so yeah, one more there. So I didn't see any spelling errors. And then the last one, do the text boxes fit within the title safe area? So let's see here, we go to the end here and we turn on our title and action safe areas. Uh, let's see. Brandon, do you remember which one is the title and which is the action? The outer one or the inner one? One is the title safe, the others are action safe. Something is the, the outer? The outer is our action safe area. We don't want any of the action. So the inner one is our title safe area. The inner. All right, so does our text fit inside there? It's kind of tricky because the O was more of a logo rather than it's actually not actually text. So they said, yes, it does fit. Your text does actually fit in there. Um, whereas this O in the outdoors, kind of like a tricky question there. We'll just, so most of the text though does fit in there, right? So that's what we're looking at there. We'll, we'll say yes for that one. All right, any repeats on page 67 there or two as it's for us? All right, so that's what you would do to go through there. And um, as they said here, this line up at the top indicates whether there might be any issues with playback or rendering. So I wonder why in here this is red. Oh, I think I remember, I know, I don't know. They, at one point they had us like keyframe the hamburger into the TV. I think that was kind of one of our exercise labs. But the rest of the timeline is yellow. So it does indicate that there shouldn't be any potential problems in exporting, all right? So as you're looking at your own projects, getting ready to export, those are some of the things that you want to look for. Gaps in the timeline, which would then, what would a gap in the timeline create if we had a, a, a gap across everything? Austin? Blank yeah, blank or black just screen, right, of nothing, right? Audio levels, we talked about. We don't want them to peak, so they're distorted and you can't understand or too low, meaning you couldn't hear it. Um, spelling errors, obviously we don't, we want to be looking professional and not having uh, spelling errors and then uh, exporting, getting those, those settings in for that. All right. So that is the first step there. The next page, they're talking about the actual process of exporting a clip or a range of sequence. Uh, so they are found under the file menu whether exporting a clip or a range or a sequence, it's good to uh, practice to check the source range for the export as it will determine the start and the end points of the video to be exported. So that's why I always said to, you know, do the entire sequence, right? I always recommend that. Um, we haven't been, I mean, we've been talking about in and out points now, but um, if you're doing your whole project, we go to file, export media, and this is your source range. So you can do work area, entire sequence, which I always like to do. Um, I think the work area is up here. You can kind of create different, like a range by using these brackets in here. And then I believe that is your work area. No, nope. no, that's custom. I haven't used work area then. I don't know what uh, where that would be. So, um, they're talking about, so they ask a question there and in the activity it has us um, use the H.264 setting just as we've been doing and you have your presets, you know, they go into all these things here for YouTube and all that type of stuff. Um, and then there, the question is which format options are picture based? Is this H.264, is that going to make a picture or a video? Kaylee? Or H.264, if we export with that setting, is it just going to make a picture or a video? Mm -hmm. A video, right? And it makes an MP4. So what are the, what are, um, looking at this drop down list here, uh, Deanna, which would be a picture based, uh, what would produce a picture? 
from these options. I don't know if you can, is it too small to see? JPEG, all right, good. That's definitely one. Um, Marquise, can you see my screen? Yes. What would be another format here that would produce a picture rather than a video? Um, it's just a little bit hard to see. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't think I can make it bigger there, but. No, no, it's, it's, it's all good. It's, it's part of like my screen. What about AVI? Would that be picture or video? I believe that's video. AVI is video. BMP, bitmap. You, have you ever heard of that one, Marquise? No, I have not. Anybody? Nope, that's another picture format. Um, DPX, I believe, is a picture. GIF can be a little tricky because it could be an animated GIF or just a still GIF image. They have that listed as a, uh, a picture file. Um, we talked about JPEG, MP3, picture, video, or none of the above? Video. MP3? I believe so. That's no, a, wait. That, no, wait, where's, yeah. That's your sound files, right? So we, no, could, right. we could just export your project as just audio, right? Is what that means. MPEG2 is video. All these MPEGs are video. Open EXR, I don't know. P2 movie, I guess that would definitely be something specific. PNG, picture or video? Picture, good. QuickTime, video. Targa, I think is a picture. TIFF is a picture also. What, Austin? The Targa? Yeah, I'm not too sure either. PNG is picture. Okay, so we have, we talked about here, PNG, GIF, JPEG, and BMP, all right? And I think somebody actually was showing me on their computer one day, they must have had the preset wrong, so they had, they were exporting a video timeline, and they had like JPEG turned on, so it generated like, a thousand pictures, right? If you have a 10 second video at 30 frames per second, how many pictures would that make? 10 second video at 30 frames per second, Austin? 300 photos, right? Yep, that'll fill up your desktop or any folder very quickly. So be careful uh, that you know which one is in there. All right, when we're exporting, the, uh, the export settings are uh, when the export settings area of the export settings windows collapse, there are other export settings tabs available to set preferences. To set the export location, the file name found in export settings will need to be clicked as well, or as that allows one to set both the file and the location. Um, so, <clears throat> they're saying here, when we do go to export, where are the time code overlay and name overlay export options turned on? Uh, let's see if I, they, they're saying that's in the effects tab. Now, I'll come back to this. So here's our effects tab. And trying to see what they're talking about there. Where are the time code overlay and name overlay export options? Uh, it's got to be buried in here somewhere. I'm not going to go crazy looking for it. Um, so we'll turn on the time code. I don't remember that being on the test either. What can be changed in the video? Oh, actually, you know, let me look and see here. Maybe that's still in our whole, ex since we're talking about exporting, Remember, if you don't have your timeline selected and you go to File, Export, Media, it doesn't pop up. So here we go. Oh, all right. So here's what they're talking about, I think. Image overlay. All right. So you can 
So they're saying from number four, this is the effects tab that they're talking about. All right, so you can do image overlay, name overlay, time code overlay. Which I guess, you know, for somebody for editing purposes, maybe if you were sending this off to your director to look at and post some comments, then he could, uh, you know, tell you at a specific time what it's going to be. He could have your project name put in there, all right? So this isn't actually a layer in your editing, but it's just overlays that you can put in there through your when, while you're exporting. All right, so now they're talking about their number eight, what can be changed in the video tab. So if we click on here in our export settings under video, all right, we can change uh, render at maximum depth, which is usually good to do. It will slow down your processing a little bit, but it will then give you the highest quality video um, and set a target bit rate. So that is uh, kind of technical with that, but that has to do with your file size also. All right, so number eight is uh, just video, general video settings, render at maximum depth, and target bit rate. Similar to that, for our audio tab, we can change <coughs> audio formats and sample rates. All right, the last one on this page, it says, the publish tab will let you publish the video directly to multiple cloud services. So what do we see here? Are there more than one sources? We could do Adobe Creative Cloud, Adobe Stock, Behance, which is like a uh, um, a portfolio type of thing. Stock would be stock imagery, Facebook, FTP, which is file sharing, Twitter, Vimeo, YouTube. All right, so actually, you know, we talk about the process too of what I'm asking you guys to do. So as you're publishing your video, you could have it post right to YouTube directly for you without having to upload it afterwards. So this is a good tab that we haven't really talked about and it could save you some time by doing that. So getting back to the question there, is that true or false? Will that publish tab allow us to directly publish to multiple cloud services? Yes, so that is true. All right, so as we were saying, we've done like these processes, but we haven't really explored all the finer details and there are things that um, are beneficial and, and helpful. So that I think is definitely a good one there in clicking publish so that you can send it to multiple places all at once. Mm -hmm. Nine was audio formats and sample rates. The next thing they talk about is exporting a single frame. So we would just send that out as a PNG file. Uh, I'm not going to go through that process too much. It would just be changing that the format on top. Um, so that's page five. Page six talks about exporting with a media encoder. So we did talk about that also. Um, so there's a couple ways that you can do that. The easiest way is just to press Q down here on the bottom. I don't know what I did here, uh-oh. Duration, oh, I think because I changed my source range to sequence in and out, there we go. So if I do Q, no, oh boy. What'd I do to this? Let's cancel it, maybe if I come back into it. Uh, probably because I still have all those publishing options on there. Do I still have them all checked off? No, all right, good. So let's try it now. There we go. 
So when we press Q, it will launch Adobe Media Encoder and then it'll process it through there. The benefit of our Media Encoder is that it then allows us to um, kind of keep working in Premiere. We can keep editing on a project or just, um, you know, speed it up in that way. So that's what's happening here. It's opening in the Media Encoder. All right, so now let's go back to page one. All right, which should kind of sum up all this stuff that we learned in these different lessons. Or give a little more background information. All right, an older computer with many blanks equals a high likelihood of seeing a red, red in the timeline when trying to render a video. What in a project might cause the software to kind of struggle a little bit? What? Not this, not cuts, but that's a good guess. Austin? That could be one also, but uh, they say effects, all right? If we apply many effects, right? If we do like chroma keying and distortion and all kinds of stuff like that, that's gonna slow down your computer or, or give you that red line in your, when you're trying to render. Uh, number two, Premiere does not have a built-in what feature, so this aspect of proofreading text must be done in a Word app or similar. So what did we say it does not have? Tyler? Spell check, all right? Premiere does not have a built-in spell check. Uh, number three, when exporting a file location, a, when exporting a file location can be set uh, through clicking on the file, this kind of sounds weird, name, all right, oh yeah, right, I always talk you that, tell you that, click on the blue file name in your export settings, right, and that will allow you to see where it's going and what you want to call it. So we always click on that file name in the export settings. Number four, in Premiere, the button which looks like a camera in both the program and the source monitor is called the... And we talked about it a little bit. This little camera icon, what does this do? If I press this little camera icon. Lauren, any idea? If I press this little camera button, what do you think it's going to do? You know, I mean, just what does a camera do? I think Destiny has an answer. What do you think? It's like a screenshot, basically, right? Or a frame shot, all right? So no matter what point along our timeline, we can go in here and actually we'll, we'll export a frame. Is there a technical way there of saying a screenshot? Because it's not really taking a, a picture of your whole screen. It's just taking a picture of that frame within Premiere. Uh, number five, if we want Adobe Media Encoder to render an export rather than doing the rendering in Premiere, we can click the... Kenzie, do you remember how we get it to Media Encoder? What was I just talked about a couple minutes ago? Q, good. It's a weird spelling word. Q-U-E-U-E. -U -E. Uh, six, batch processing is the rendering of multiple exports. So that would be done in Media Encoder where we could process multiple files at once. And that's another benefit of using the media encoder is that we don't have to um, just do one at a time and wait for it to be done. The last thing, archiving a project saves our project files to a location of our choosing, all right? And they didn't go over that too much, but file, we would do file, project manager and then you can come into here and you can browse to tell it where you want to archive the project. It'll put everything all nicely together, uh, gather all the, the media clips and things like that. Alright, any repeats on that page there? Seven is location.
You get all that, Kaylee? Yeah. All right, so now we're going to, yes? Uh, is that on this third page? PNG, GIF, JPEG, and bitmap, or BMP. Any repeats from anybody online? Um, can you go back to the second page? It was uh, letter B. Sure. Uh, so the audio was good because there's no audio in the red and none of it's too low. Okay. All right. All right, let's go on to the exercise labs then for this section. So we're going online. And did I close my tab or is it this one? There we go. All right, so last section here, publishing digital media, and we're going to go exercise labs. All right, six tasks. So number one here, set the current project to export the entire sequence with the preset as YouTube 720 HD and the location of the file uh, to, the, to the file, output fun final four and rename the file outdoor fun. All right, so to export uh, Paige Garcia, what do I do first? Okay. Yep. Good. All right, and there's so. What would you do next? What are they giving us in the question? Pull out the keywords there. So what are they asking in the task up at the top? Try to kind of pull out what you know. The, the details or the specs that they were looking for. Okay. So we could click on here. I think they want you to do it in the... Oh, the first thing they said is the entire sequence. So that's down here in your source range. So instead of in and out, we want entire sequence. All right. And then they said preset as YouTube 720 HD. Where do we see preset, Paige? Or what does it say right now? I think, you're, are, yeah, right, so the second one down, right, where it says match source HD. So in there, we're going to go to YouTube 720. So we're going to find that one down here. And then... The final thing they're saying is set the export location to file and output it or name it as uh, outdoor fun. Let's see if that's it. Oh, there we go. All right, so that was it. First task done. All right, nothing really new there. We've been doing that all along, Tyler. Five. Well, I think it's called five. It's uh, it's exporting digital media. It should be the last one. The last section there. All right. Second task. Um. Adjust the export settings to the current project so that includes the time code and the name overlay. Nick, did you get to that one yet? I didn't get it last night, so I remember where that was. Set it so that it includes the time code and name overlay. It'll be over here somewhere, right? Oh, that's right. It's in the effects tab. I forgot too. So they want. All right, so we're going to click on the effects tab and we're looking for time code and name. Oh, I don't think I clicked on it. I guess it was the same thing there. All right, so that's in the publish settings or the effects tab rather, I'm sorry. Next one, three of six, use the source monitor to export the current still frame 
name it YouTube thumbnail and set the format as PNG. All right, so let's see. Uh, Jade, where am I looking for? What am I looking for to export a frame? The camera icon in the project monitor. Okay. Now it's interesting. They say use the source monitor, but really the program monitor is what's visible here. All right. And what are we naming it? YouTube thumbnail. Yep. And what's our format? PNG. PNG. All right, and that's that one. So that would make a picture of just that little dog on there that we saw in the frame. All right, four of six. Set the entire current set the entire current timeline to export while still being able to work in Premiere. Accept any defaults. Ensure that the media encoder is set to do the exporting. All right, so keyword there, or maybe not so keyword there. Um, Maggie, what am I going to do there? All right. They want it to, to process in the media encoder, so do I have to press? Kenzie might be able to help you if she remembers. The Q, right? Oh, oh wait a minute. I guess I missed the part there. Uh, they want the source range. That's weird. Oh, that's right, because it wasn't the entire sequence. So now we do Q. All right. Yeah, a lot of these you have to read the very fine details of them. So I, I kind of overlooked that part with the entire timeline that the sort the in and the out point was selected by default. So we want to make sure that's where I was off on that. All right. Use the golfing B roll sequence to export the current media. View the files in the media encoder queue. All right. So. All right, so here's what happens with this one. So again, we have media encoder. Oh, they want you to go to this one first. All right, so you can right click also instead of going to export settings. So if we go on this golfing B-roll and then select export media, then we can go, what else does it say? It doesn't say anything about the in and the out, but all right, we're gonna queue it. And that's it. So you can also right click on the sequence and then export that through there also is what they're showing you there. And the last one, archive the current project, use the option to collect files and copy them to a new, new location, accept all values. Uh, Jenna, do you remember where we talked about as far as to collect or to archive the project? It was kind of the last thing we talked about in the vocab. Anywhere to start there, Jenna? Do you go to the file menu? Yeah. And project manager? Very good. All right, and then as they're saying, they're just going to select all defaults. But we would browse and tell it where we would want to go. Good memory. All right, so that is task six of six. All right, so please email me your PDFs. I should see that you have this activity or exercise uh, done. And then we will, I guess we can start talking about filming our minute to win it stuff. All right, so I'll stop.